Thanks for choosing this free Anfield Index podcast. If you'd prefer to listen to this or any of our other shows without adverts, then now's the time to check out Anfield Index Pro. With AI Pro, you can supercharge your entire listening experience. You'll not only get all of our podcasts without the ads, but you'll have them far faster with our quick publish feature available exclusively for subscribers. AI Pro also puts you in the heart of our sound studio, with an option to listen to many of our shows live and interact with the podcasters in real time as the shows are recording. Upgrading couldn't be easier. AI Pro is available on all popular podcast platforms, and we have our own apps for Apple and Android. Just head on over to AnfieldIndexPro.com and get started today. Hello and welcome to episode 338 of the Anfield Index podcast. And if I'm wrong about that, Lisa Marie will definitely tell me in a second. I am broadcasting to you from my nighttime field here in beautiful rural Ireland. It's dark and it's half past eight. That's depressing. But what's not depressing is that I'm joined not only by one, not by two, but by three of what Chris Hugh would call my colleagues of lethal cunning. And that they are tonight, Carl Kopak, Lisa Marie Hanahan, and Guy Drinkle. So I'm looking forward to this chat because, if we're all being honest, it's a gloomy period. And we have sort of got ourselves into a situation where, as ever, the fan base is riven, but more riven than usual. And people are going out onto various hills and dying on them. Fair play to them. Uh, I have no interest in committing myself to any such extremities. I look forward to a chat in the comparatively sensible, I do say comparatively sensible, uh, confines of the minds of these uh, three uh, friends of mine who are all interested in the same thing. So we'll get going on it in a second. Normally, I have something here to contribute by way of uh, something to lighten the mood. I, I, I feel like I've dropped the ball this week because... Um, I have, uh, simply. Uh, but I, I wanted to put a bit of context into it because I have started, uh, not Monday gone by, but the Monday previously, three sessions a week as uh, a complete newbie doing weight training with a personal trainer. If you had told me that two years ago, I'd have laughed at you. If you told me that five years ago, I'd have laughed at you. I always had this arrogance about my fitness and all the rest of it. But when it falls off a cliff for you for a couple of years, uh, you got to do something dramatic. And I have to say, this is one of the best things I've done. Not necessarily because I'm instantly um, seeing results, but because it's such a challenge. I found it really difficult. It's something that I've never done before. I had great aerobic fitness. I can run up and down mountains. I can kayak all day. I can go on treadmills and stuff like that. I can play football. But I didn't have this particular fitness. And people looking at me might think, oh, you're a pretty blocky lad. You'd imagine you are. But no, it's, oh, it's so depressing when you realize how little muscle, specific muscle strength you have in certain areas. So I've enjoyed the hell out of that. And I'm going to be boring you with the details of it over the coming weeks. And hopefully it'll be something uh, that's a pretty transformative thing. That's what I'm hoping for. I've got a 12-week program, and we are now literally halfway through week two. Uh, it's been great so far. And I, I wanted to flag it up because I'm not going to be able to stop myself from talking about it as we go on. So hopefully it will be something that's a good thing and not something that I'm crying about by the end of it. Just to let you know in advance that that's going to be a thing and a topic from now on. And with that in mind, I wanted to go to uh, Lisa Marie, who I know, Lisa Marie, you've um, uh, had your usual busy week. And I know we're taking you away from your working day as ever, uh, which we we always genuinely do appreciate. I mean, it, it, I say it again and again and again, but the the, the levels of commitment from fans who are not based in and around uh, the general environs of Liverpool always does take me aback. So fair play to you yet again uh, for the the commitment of doing the show in the middle of your working day. We do appreciate it. What's the week been like for you, my friend? Well, you know, I had sort of an extended holiday weekend. Um, you know, it was, you know, it was a bank holiday or Labor Day weekend and mentioned on our last podcast. And so I Monday was the holiday and I took Tuesday off too. So my work week... It just started yesterday. So, um, and yeah, and thanks for that. Kind of depressed. Anyway, um, 
so yeah, so I'm kind of catching up and, and digging out from taking a couple of days off and paying absolutely no attention to emails and requests and, and all of that thing. So I've been sort of digging out from underneath that. But I am happy to be here on episode 339 of the Enfield Index Podcast. Crap. <laughs> Every week. Every week. Crap. <laughs> Oh my it's what God. I'm here for. It's what I, I'm here for. It feels um, like it feels like I did that on purpose to set you up. I did not. That's a genuine cock up on my part. I apologize profusely, <laughs> and thank you for your uh, correction. Well, anyway, but you know, I, I I get what you're saying about the personal trainer, Trevor. I worked with one a few years back, and I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And I mean, he had me doing things that I never would have dreamed. I mean, we were boxing. I mean. <laughs> I'm, you know, if anyone looking at me would never dream that I would be someone who would enjoy something like that. But I loved it. It was fantastic. And unfortunately, he left the gym and I um, really have not sought anyone else out. But but you may have inspired me, Trevor. I might have to um, to take that back up because I did. It was it was just fantastic. I really and I liked what I liked about it was because you were working with someone, you were sort of committed, you know, like you had to show up for the appointments sort of thing, you know, barring yeah. emergencies or whatever. So, um, you know, I, I liked that about it, but no, it's, it's just kind of been a week outside of, you know, the football stuff. Yeah, it can go wrong. I, I remember many moons ago, my missus went off and tried it and the girl that she was with just, they didn't click or she wasn't particularly inspirational or whatever. So it didn't take. And then I have had other people had that situation as well, but so far so good. And, um, it's probably like a lot of things There has to be probably a little bit of, um, you have to feel it, uh, that it's worth, worth your while. And, um, yeah, so far so good. And I don't blame you for being generally despondent outside of, uh, life in general. I just w- meant to say to you, on the back of your what you your mentions of Labor Day, uh, I went off and I, I I remember that I'd heard a movie. There was a movie called Labor Day. Josh Brolin's in it. Kate Winslet, and I said I'll, I'll go and check this out. It's actually a fantastic cast oh. altogether. It's uh, J.K. Simmons in it. Tobey Maguire's in it. It's yeah, it's a really interesting movie. Oh, I forgot uh, to check that out. Yeah, so I went and had a look at it, and, and actually it was decent. It was one of those d- diverting thriller type things. So yeah, it might kill an hour or an hour and a half for some people. Just that I mentioned that. Um, now we're building up, of course, to the um, uh, revelation that will be Guy movie, Guy Drinkle's movie of the week. So uh, I'll go next uh, to to Carl Kopek so we can maintain the uh, suspense a little bit longer. But I do know, Carl, that you uh, are in the middle of of, uh, of of busy times yourself. So again, fair play to you for finding a slot for us here. And um, anything you'd like to open with? Um, yeah, to be honest, I'm going to pour some light on the magic of what is the, of, of this uh, podcast. But normally we have stuff planned for a few hours in advance or, or what have you. And I just came to it late and just thought, I've got nothing. I'm, I'm moving house in a couple of days. Um, I'm a mountaineer and footballer, as we've discussed before. Um, <laughs> so a very busy man. I've had COVID this week, actually, as well. First time. Casually thrown in, I'm a mountaineer. I'm a mountaineer and footballer. Um, I'm just getting over COVID, too. So um, I thought, what, what will entertain the visitor? That's really, really quick. And I've got some Mr. Burns quotes from The Simpsons. Well, that's lovely. Ready? Yeah, they come. These are the, these are the best ones I've found so far. Family, religion, friendship. These are the three demons you must slay if you wish to succeed in business. <laughs> Could you let me know when the punch says come on? I choked on my club. Okay. okay. This one, <laughs> when, when I first got into the Simpsons, I had an old VHF tape with most of the first season on it. And this is one of my favorite episodes. And this is my favorite quote from it. Uh, it's when he's lost the election to become governor. Um, uh, because uh, because Marge Simpson basically just, just messes up the whole thing for him. And he turns to his mate and says, Ironic, isn't it, Smithers? This anonymous clan has slack-jawed troglodytes and cost me the election. And yet if I were to have them killed, I would be the one who would go to jail. That's a democracy <laughs> for me. That's one of my favourite quotes ever. <laughs> Homer, you know, Mr. Burns, you're the richest guy I know. Way richer than Lenny. Oh, yes, but I'd trade it all for a little more. 
<laughs> I'm going to do all 10 of them. I don't care. I don't care. How long have we gone for? Ah, a candy shop. Yes, I'll take two pounds of Bristol's toffee. Oh, and don't wrap it too tightly. I'm hungry now. The vending machine doesn't do anything. You've made a powerful enemy today, my friend. <laughs> right. Now, what... A few more details about this year's company Pickwick. Picnic. It's at the plant. No food will be served. The activity will be work and the picnic is cancelled. <laughs> I think I've worked with people like that. Uh, I, 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 I want you to save five more for next week because this is uh, tremendous okay. stuff. I also, I, I, I was always under the impression that uh, Burns was based on David Rockefeller because if you've ever heard David Rockefeller speak, he's got that, he's got that kind of voice. He's, he's a little bit like that, that kind of thing, and and you know that kind of weird. Uh, sort of mid-Atlantic, except not, uh, oddly British Yank accent. It's a yeah. weird thing that only those New York elites tend to have. But apparently he's based on a guy called Barry Diller, who was actually running Fox Broadcasting. I think that's bollocks. I think that's well, what well, you there's, there's a bit of Citizen Kane in there, isn't there? Well, there's an entire episode based on Citizen Kane. Yeah, I, I absolutely think it's David Rockefeller. I, I, I would suggest to anybody, go and have a look at a David Rockefeller interview, especially when he's a little bit older. Uh, and I think you'll, you'll think you'll struggle to argue with, with my take on that. But anyway, Barry Diller, apparently it is, whatever. Uh, we will go on now and we will get our uh, culture in for the week, which is, of course, Guy Drinkle's section on... The cinematic arts. Can I, can I give us a stand up, in. please? Well, I've, they, been, I've been stood this whole time. They've both gone mental here, guy. Look at this. They've, they, 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 they've, they've lost the run of themselves. Uh, do, do, let, do let me know uh, if, if, if you're okay to continue, man. Uh, first of all, can I just ask you, after that week where you've done even more podcasts than I have, are you all right? Not really, but we move yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> it's just just me yeah, touching base. Just, just, just touch touching base, making sure a pal's yeah. okay before we get started. Yeah. Right, let's let's distract ourselves, man. What's the uh, what's this week's uh, 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 item of of cultural gold? When football is shit, you have many distractions. One of mine is Formula One, which is also shit. So that's <laughs> very good. Um, but I have found a film from Formula One. Which has Sylvester Stallone in and looks fucking dreadful. Oh, nice. It's called now, Driven. Can I ask you before you tell us mm. about Driven? Because I actually think I remember this. Can you give us the year of that? 2001. Yeah, I definitely do remember this. This is when Sylvester Stallone should have known better than to be making films uh, and should have probably hung up his boots, uh, but still had 20 still, more still years. Still going strong. <laughs> yeah, still had 20 more years of action hero movies in him, apparently. Who could, who, who, who did thunk it? He's, he's doing Rambo 87 when he was, uh, when he's only last year or whatever it is, and all those Expendables movies. I do remember this driven thing. I think it's around the same era he did, a, he did a remake of Get Carter. Yeah. The, yeah, the yeah, Michael Caine. Fantastic. But, but yeah. That, that Michael Caine classic, which you don't mess with because it's a, just a unique and individual thing. I'm, I'm not even sure if it's a good film, but don't mess with it. However, here's our sly taken on driven mm -hmm. now uh, before you tell us this are you serious about your fondness for formula one you are yes and no because i grew up if you do, if you don't know if one michael schumacher all that jazz i grew up when he was good the last decade or so has been pretty shit because well lewis hamilton won every race basically and it was boring last couple of years was fun i'm sure you all know the lewis hamilton stuff where he got screwed out of it at the last race. That was fun. This year's crap. If you're a Ferrari fan, it's basically like watching Man United, just being like rich but stupid. So yeah. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Ferrari fan, and yeah, it's basically like supporting United for the last eight years or whatever it is. But anywho, <clears throat> I will start off with a quote, and this conversation doesn't have Sly Stallone's character in, but I remind it. This is an F1 film. <clears throat> Qu uh, in brackets. In Japan, Sophia Simone does her synchronised swimming routine while Jimmy Bly figures out Bo Brandberg's next move in the race, racing on his computer laptop. 
<clears throat> oh, yes. Jimmy, what are you doing? Sophia, showing off to Jimmy her synchronised swimming moves. Swimming. Jimmy Bly, swimming, question mark. That's swimming to you, huh? I don't think that's swimming. That's uh, a little beyond. I've never seen anything like that. Pretty fantastic. Where do you learn that? Sophia, uh, I, I was raised by frogs. Jimmy Bly. <laughs> raised by frogs, question mark. Sophia, ribbit, ribbit, ribbit. <laughs> Laughs. No. I'm okay. not... Fin- I'm I'm there's there's more. There's... Dialogue than this. <laughs> there, there's more, don't worry. Jimmy Bly, wow. well, I'm glad you escaped. Sophia, thank you. Jimmy, what's on your mind? Jimmy, Jimmy how does Bo do it? Do what? Stay on top. Get focused. He got scared. No, I don't think so. That guy is Ike's. <clears throat> Clear my throat for the big showpiece here. Sophia, to you, he's ice. Inside, he's scared. But he likes it. He says it makes him try harder. Today, he says the day he's not afraid is the day he'll stop. You know, you're just as scared. And the day you stop caring what other people think make yourself happy will be even better. Resumes her swimming routine. Shouts, come on. Oh, my God. That is absolute. That is... that. I mean... You just keep bringing the absolute quality. Would you, you like know, to know the tagline before we move on? I really would. So on the poster we have a very bad, like basically uh, Microsoft Paint, like select images of an F1 car, driven in yellow, literally Microsoft Paint text, underneath, welcome to the human race. Oh, wow. Welcome. To- oh, wow. That's brilliant. You know, as you were reading that dialogue, I had flashbacks, like really hard flashbacks to the The era when, no, (laughs) (laughs) to to the era when um, myself and and Carl and Neil uh, and and Cam were doing bits from Steve Bruce. Genuinely. Mm. I mean, you're looking at, (laughs) you're, you're looking at that level of dialogue. I mean, that's. As I oh. said, my 13-year-old, I'm pretty sure, could write something a little more eloquent. It's a bit more involved. Yeah, evolved, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, <laughs> but, but, but at least, I mean, would it be better? And would it be as entertaining as that absolute <laughs> Would tribe? it involve synchronized swimming? Yes. Um, and and a, girl saying, a girl saying, ribbit, ribbit, <laughs> ribbit. I, I, I feel immediately like I should put on my best Alan Rickman voice, voice and go, ribbit. And just do a. Just, it sounds like something you could you could absolutely do in an Alan Rickman voice. You know what you could do now? You say it. a ribbit, and then have Crazy Frog as someone's ringtone in the background. Oh, brilliant! Yeah, that's the only way it could possibly be improved. If we're uh, being honest, I think that's how you get the Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can I can I thank you all for your? Uh, how many stars did this get? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, yes. 4.6. This is quite high on my list, which is oh. disappointing. I don't know. Here's the that. thing that I've been thinking about lately. Um, there's another podcast there, like, uh, uh, let's just say, right, with Welsh people in it, I really, really like. And um, they were talking about the career of Adam, Adam Sandler. And at what point do you basically just sort of stop and just think, I'll just do shit then, and you can buy a house every single time a film comes out? And the reason I say that is because this is 2001. 1997, he did Copland, which I genuinely think he's brilliant in. It's his, it's his, it, it's possibly his best film. Have you it's seen um, Have you seen Hustle, his newest one? No. On no. It's no. actually good. Okay. It's not it's like, a, um, um, what's that shit Western one he made? Hang on. I saw Hustlers. He's not, it's not. No, it's a basketball one, Hustle. Oh, oh, sorry, Adam Sander. No, yes. no, 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 no. Actually, now that you mention that, I'd have to say, Carl, that guy's kind of half turned it around. He mm. does like he uh, he does that kind of. I think Mel Gibson described it once as one for me, one for the studio, right? So like he yeah. does that. Like he's done a few. I don't know if you've seen Punch Drunk Love, have you? Mm, yes, I think I have. Absolutely, where it's a, a, a PT Anderson movie, uh, and he's also done one recently called "Oh my God, what was it?" It was a bit diamond. Uncut What's gems. Them? Uncut gems. I haven't holy, seen it, but it's meant to be brilliant. Holy that's crap! That, that's yeah, that they discussed that one in the show. Yeah. 
hundred percent worth your time. Everybody go and have a look at that because he is, he plays, his performance is wonderfully unhinged in that. And, uh, really you can see there's an actor there, but I totally get what you're saying. I mean, so many of them are just by the book. I thought, I, I, I assumed Hustlers was going to be that as well, guy, to be honest with you. No, it's, um, I won't, well, I kind of do spoiler, but it's just basically he's a basketball scout and he's trying to find the next big thing. But it's actually yeah. a reason. I'm, I'm, I like basketball, but I wouldn't say I follow basketball, but it, it's really enjoyable. I think it's just on Netflix. It's an easy hour and a half watch, I think. Yeah, which we could all do with in the current mm. context of <laughs> um, of life, because you know, you, you, if you haven't already noticed, and just let me check my numbers here, so I'm perfectly accurate about it. Uh, and I assume, guy, that you are con- recording this because I forgot to fucking I hit record. Indeed. God bless you. God it bless does you. Say my friend. Guy is recording the call. Oh, it does. Yeah. Oh, look at her. Have you missed saying? Have you missed doing the voice? No, well, I figured you'd missed hearing it. <laughs> <laughs> that was for you Trev thanks Lisa Marie uh, I, well it would be uh, before the end of the show we'll have you say something horribly calm and yet apocalyptic like you know the there are three minutes left before your death or something I, they, 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 this is the type of thing we're, we're looking for um, there are no Doritos left <laughs> there are no Doritos left we are, are. We are we are currently twenty five minutes into the show, lads. For the love of Jesus, can we get the act together here? No, I don't to want to talk about it. Well, <laughs> we are all delaying it quite beautifully. Yeah, yeah. It, I it, can it, find it, another film. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, what was that one I put in, in the group the other day? We can talk about Killer Sofa, which is a chair. Yeah. It is, a yeah, it is a chair. You're absolutely correct. <laughs> and for the record, in case you're wondering, um, guys is 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 going a bit inside baseball there. In in our group chat, Guy posted a movie called Killer Sofa, in which it would appear a man is violated by a chair, mm. which apparently is sofa. Uh, but the clip itself is a wonder of modern cinema. Um, so again, yet again, another wonderful cultural tip from our guru, Guy. Go and have a look at the trailer for Killer Sofa. I presume you can find that on YouTube, Guy. I, I have that TikTok saved. Just message me. I'll, I'll, I have propaganda for my films. Don't worry. <laughs> TikTok. Do you know what? Let's just keep the distraction going. Fuck yeah. this shit. I can't. Uh, TikTok. Yeah. Should I or should I not? Now, before before you say anything, before you say <laughs> anything, I, I have been wildly amused by some reposts on Twitter and on Instagram of TikTok stuff. And some of the people who I actually like a lot do TikTok accounts. I, in my little tinfoil world, have been reluctant to put the app on my phone because it's I'd only, rather not. It's I'd only rather, China, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> except, <laughs> except for that reason exactly. Uh, the greatest surveillance state in the nation in the in the in the globe. Don't I'm, don't hunt I, me down, please. Yeah, I, you're already fucked. Yeah. Don't worry about it. You're on the list. So what what do you think? Like, I know people who have Instagram and they go yeah. for hours on end looking at reels, and it literally eats their life away. Yes. And they send you these reels. They go, Haha, look at the dog doing the funny shit. And you go, thanks. And they send you three of them. And then they say, did you see the thing I sent you about the dog doing the funny shit? And you go, yeah, yeah, it was good. It was really, it was really good. And I want look, to be- Child ever- number two sends me TikTok stuff all the time and but do you have, just, do you have the app do you have the app on your phone i do have the app i mean oh, i don't know she, she it's, succumbed it's, to it's, the tiktok app because my kid is always sending me tiktok videos to watch but yes <laughs> so i see i have a pal who sends me tiktok stuff via whatsapp but i just watch it and then i i, I just can't commit i cannot commit to yet another i know who de- definitely doesn't have the tiktok app on his phone mr copack <laughs> No, I'm not, 12. I'm not 12, sorry. He's not 12. Also, <laughs> also, the predictable angle that he would go with the answer as well. Tremendous. I love that. We are totally on message here. And with that in mind, we need to get into the footy because it is no. what is known uh, round about these parts as a heap of shite. 
It's terrible. <laughs> it's a mess. It's a shit show. It's everything. Depressing. It's the depre- it is depressing. And I listen. I've just done uh, Mulby on the spot. This week's Mulby on the spot. Literally before we this show, the guy was recording, it, so he knows. And it's the first time I ever did a show with Jan where we didn't spend one third to one half of the show talking about other teams and laughing at other lads and their problems because all of a sudden it's literally all we have is problems um and that is not a dramatic exaggeration that is an actual reflection of the situation where you have a manager who says well it looks like we're going to have to reinvent ourselves where you have players whose form has literally dropped off a cliff where you have a system that no longer works where you have like I say, a fan base riven, um, people heading off out to various islands and then um, deciding that uh, they're going to find the hot, t- highest hill on that island and, and die there because they decide um, Pep Linder's book is the problem or it's all about Jordan Henderson, even though he's not playing, or Fabinho's shit, lad, or... Um, it's Mo Salah. He's in league with the Illuminati or something. I don't know. There, there are, there's endlessly ridiculous takes. So I hope here that we could have some sort of a discussion where we're trying to tease out what we think is likely to happen. Can I just get it going? I am not known to be pessimistic. Uh, and yet I feel that this may well get worse before it gets better. We have to play Wolves at the weekend. Their game of their game, their style of play is pretty much set up to put us under pressure. As Jan said, they can play through our press. Um, we followed that with Ajax, who had the, according to Carl Matchett, the most impressive display in our group at the weekend. Uh, Carl saw them play and thought they were really impressive against Rangers in their 4 0 win. Uh, they too will come to play football at Anfield through our press. Counterpoint to that, of course, and I'll start with you on this, young Kopak, is Anfield. The counterpoint to that, of course, is can it can it really, really be anything other than Liverpool? And there are many, many reasons to push back against any concept of this is our identity. This is who we are. There are many reasons, and they're valid reasons. But I don't want to. I don't want to listen to them. So I'm curious to know what you think is going to happen over the next two games. Do you think this is the moment? Did, did I see a tweet early on from you where you were saying this is uh, this is like a, a similar to to uh, was it was it Shankly Wat- Watford? Was that what Watford, you said? Yeah. Uh, where, 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 where things. It, they hit a nad here and you, there's only one place to go or is it that is it what I fear that possibly we may have to take a lot more pain before we can ex, exorcise the ghost what do you what do you reckon I, I don't I don't think it's as much as pain I think it's a reset in as much as um, the, the problem with being a, a very 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 successful team is that when someone beats you and then someone else beats you and you haven't had a good game, uh, you've had one good game in nine or something like that, then it's a really big realisation that, do you know what, no one's scared of us anymore. And it's only then that you can really find out what a team's made of. And like, you know, when you're battering everyone in sight, you know, you're riding that wave of, we've won tonight already. And your 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 confidence and your press and your aggression gets you through that time. It's only when you're 3-0 down and your right-back's walking back to cover a man that you really start to think, hang on, we may not be. Basically, the, 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 the Emperor's naked. And that's been seen this season, apart from Bournemouth, obviously. And Jurgen Klopp really saw that last night. And um, I don't think it's like, you know, we're going to lose our next 15 games or anything like that. But what it really does, it basically just sits everyone down and says, Do you know what? We might be shit. We need to try again. We need to start again. Um, I wouldn't be too surprised if he changes the formation. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see four in midfield if he can get four in midfield. Um, and I wouldn't. It's impossible. But if I'm that manager, I'm not playing the right back for at least a fortnight based on what he's done. Mm. Um, 
And um, but you can't do that because we haven't got a fullback. We've got Joe Gomez. He can play Matip, and we do put Joe Gomez at right back. But it's I'm not saying that just to pick on Trent, but Trent has been bloody awful. And last night was the angriest I've ever been with him. So poor. Um, but I think it's more of a case of do you know what we do here? We go back again and we start again, and we we tell each other that we're a bit shit and we're going to get better instead of the other way around. We stop telling each other, you know, the mentality of monster stuff. That can only get you two foot so far before teams start working you out. And Napoli absolutely worked us out. We should have been a goal down in 14 seconds. It was ridiculous. Should have been um, 10 men after nine minutes. <laughs> it should have been. Yeah, absolutely should have been. And so when I started, like, you know, this is Shankly's. So basically, for those who don't know, we, we played Watford in the early 70s and Shankly's cup winning side of 65 was getting old. And we lost against Watford, who were like third division or something then. And Shankly just said, Right, okay. You're all going. I'm going to bring in, I'm going to get rid of uh, Roger Hunt, Ian St. John, and I'm going, to, I'm going to bring in, you know, the younger players, Keegan. But, uh, I'm, I'm not going to play Tommy Lawrence anymore. I'm going to play this like Clemens. I'm going to bring in, you know, et cetera. You know, he just basically just thought, right, you're all gone. You're all too old. You're not going to do it for me anymore. And I'm ruining, not only am I ruining the club, we didn't win a thing for seven years, but it's time to build my second greatest side, which is Alex Ferguson's greatest thing. He did it three times. He brought in, he did three different teams, which is not nothing. And I think it's time you're going to have a look at his second rather than just thinking, well, we've done it so far. We're getting, we're getting found out which I've massively. And it's the, you can look at the defense, but that's the midfield and you can look at the midfield, but also that's part of the strikers as well. Um, and it's gone slow. It's gone. Um, I'm not saying it's complacent or they're not working hard or something like that, but. You can't half tell when a side's gone scared very quickly. And no no one's running back. No one's looking after each other. As Robertson said yesterday, like he can bloody talk, by the way. Um, we're just too far away from our mates. And and, and Jurgen said, like, you know, we, we were just too wide and they were walking through us. Well, that's your job, mate. Get everyone together. So I mean, all this, you know, old cops got to go. Piss off, you're spoiled. You don't deserve a Liverpool football club. What you do is you work through it. You get through every single thing you can do. You work your arse off. And you get it back to what it was. So I'm not saying it's totally fucked, but I really like that the manager sees this as an issue. Where once we had a manager who said that losing against Everton, where we hadn't lost in ten years, winning there would have been utopia. We've got a manager who can say, Jesus, that was that was a worry, and we've got to do something about it. And I don't care what your name is, I don't care what you, how much you pay by Liverpool Football Club. If you're not doing it, you're not doing it. <laughs> You see, there's a huge alignment there in how I think about this and how you think about this. Um, I, I can't help but still have this feeling of um, resentment that <clears throat> there could have been certain decisions taken that might have mitigated absolutely the current scenario that we're in. Um, and I've, I've, I find that very hard to stomach, and I'll tell you why. And it's got nothing to do with entitlement because I, I love, I love, you know, I've seen Twitter gormless gimps referring to entitled fans uh, sanctimoniously spouting off in their, like, whatever the hell category they're in, like, you know, quoting Bill Shankly, if you can't support us when, blah, blah, blah. Just, <laughs> Isn't it's that a just, fake quote as well? It's a fucking fake quote. Yeah, it's, not, it's, not it's, it's a fake quote. But 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 these kind of people, I I, I have them t- up to my back teeth. I, I, I I'm, I'm ancient and I've been supporting the club for ages. And if 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 I've decided after all of that time that I think that it's unfair that this group of players have not been backed by the ownership or whoever the hell in terms of consolidating from position of strength, that old phrase, it's a cliche, but it's a cliche because it used to work and it continues to work. That's what every good company, football team, uh, organization of any sort does. You, you, you consolidate when you are in the ascendancy, when you are in a position of strength. In other words, you've got a really good midfield, you add to that midfield. You've got a really good uh, group of attackers, you add to that. You create competition. You create a feeling of excitement and insecurity both within the squad. And that's what Liverpool used to be when we were in our golden age. And I feel that there is a wasted element to this now 
and Lisa Marie, I, I understand that uh, my, my take on this might be different to yours, but I can't, I can't believe that you are watching this for the period that you've been watching it and, and, and would think too much differently because it doesn't seem, um, and again, this is a leading question, so tell me to just saw it off, but doesn't it seem a little bit of a shame to invert a commas waste a situation where you've got probably the best defender in the world. You've got one of the best holding midfielders in the world, if not the best. You've got literally the best attacker in the world. All of 12 months ago, he seems to have forgotten who he is. And several other players who are almost in that category. Thiago's got to be surely right high up there in his bracket. Trent, when he's playing at his best, is right up there in his brackets, as is Robbo. Doesn't it seem a shame to waste that level of talent and the managerial wonder that is Jurgen Klopp? And I feel like it's a waste. Maybe I've got it wrong and maybe I just need to understand and, and bow down to the will of economics and not be such an imbecile i don't know i find it really really depressing in that regard and and very frustrating where are you on this because give me your answer to that and give me your give me your take on whether you think it's going to change anytime soon all right i concur with everything you just said i it it is depressing and wasteful and just and it's what's so weird is it just seems to have it seems to have happened and fallen so quickly. I mean, I know we've all talked about that there were things that should have been done, you know, in the last couple of years to to shore up and and all of that. But I mean, how the hell have we all of a sudden gone from a season where, and perhaps it was just blind luck that we were in for four trophies? to where we can't string two wins together. I mean, it's crazy. I guess we did anyway, but still, I mean, now, and yesterday, I mean, I had the game on, on my iPad sitting next to my computer here as I was working. So it was on a small screen and I'm thankful for that because if I had been watching it on my TV on a, you know, big screen, I probably would have thrown things and, and broken the TV because I mean, it was just, I got to a point where I had to turn the commentary down because I just couldn't take it any longer. If I heard them say high line one more time, I was going to lose it. Um, what was the other thing that they kept saying? I don't, anyway, I mean, it was just, I mean, and not to say that there wasn't some validity, but, but it was just awful. It was absolutely atrocious. And, I don't know if we're getting payback for making fun of United all last season, but I mean, do we deserve this? I don't think so. I don't think we deserve this level of punishment, but oh, it is. It's just absolutely, it's depressing. What's your feeling? Whether um, we come at, what's your feeling whether we come out of this or not? I don't know. You know, I, we've all, I mean, we've joked about how I can again be a relatively you know positive person and, and tend to but I mean I think they've killed it out of me right now I I think the next game or so is going to be very telling um, how we respond to that um, and even if you know even if we don't get a win in the next game just come out and play you know play like we know these players can. Um, I mean, I don't think, I think that's what's more frustrating. I mean, I honestly, to me, I think that is the frustrating thing is not so much what the, those results have been, the loss, the draws, all of that. I think it's just the manner in which the team are playing. And it's, it's like, am I watching the right match? Is this the right team? That does say Alexander Arnold on the back of that jersey, right? I mean, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> is this 2011? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I didn't watch it back then. So I don't have that frame of reference. But yeah, it's just, it's, it, yeah, I can't think of anything other than say than depressing. No, it's totally valid. It's a totally valid contribution because it is exactly what I think most people are feeling. I walked into work today, there's a preponderance of reds among the staff. And 
there's everything, Guy, the full gamut, and you probably have had this as well. There's the full gamut from lads who, I swear to God, I went in there as a lad, he's, he's got 10 years on me, maybe 15, and he's like, yeah, Alexander Arnold's done. <laughs> I'm like, Get come out. on, man. He's literally a child. Come on. Uh, he's what and, 23 and soon to be yeah. 24 but yeah you know i have you seen dilly alley comparisons today that's true yeah of oh, course God. you have and then and, of course and, you I've, have. and i've seen i've seen uh, i i encountered lads who were very bullish and and saying listen um things are not as bad as, as they seem and 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 uh tiago will return and, and and all the rest of it and i really felt and i said it to Anna in the previous show that Tiago's return may paper over some cracks for the next couple of games. I think it will, actually. Uh, if Diogo Jota remembers what he's supposed to do with a football, that'll paper over some cracks for a while. But the cracks are there. And you have a manager guy who's saying that we may need to reinvent ourselves. You have a manager who's saying that for all it, it annoyed Lisa Marie, the high line is actually becoming a problem for us because we're not doing it fucking right. True. <laughs> this is a situation, my friend, where I fancifully put it in pods last week that we have a bit of an identity crisis. And mm-hmm. it seems to be the case. We absolutely do. And I think the midfield's always the, the key part of the debate, isn't it? And I think that's where the identity crisis is probably summed up most. It's just... You look, we've got Fabinho there. He is a prototypical Liverpool midfielder. Then we've got Thiago, who was the... I don't think he was the reinvention of our midfield. He was the next step in our midfield, because Thiago's almost like a unicorn type of a player. He has the industry and the quality, but he is made out of Pringles, so that's where... You can't have all of God's gift, fucking God being a twat and all. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Well, the title, watch ever, there it is. Watch out for lightning bolts. Yeah. Oh, I've already pissed off Channel. I've got nothing to lose now. Um, <laughs> I'm the sofas. Yeah. Them chairs. Oh, there'll, be a qu- there'll be some Queen monarchy bullshit at the end as well, I presume. Um, <laughs> all the flag shaggers. <laughs> um, right, well, I've lost my... T- I've lost my t- oh, my God! That's the last I will, oh, I will be, getting, I'll be getting sacked by uh, gags tomorrow. Um, is this where I go... Is this where I go? Bingo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, what was I saying? Right. Yeah, Thiago's a good player. Um, but he's injured all the time. So as you you literally said, a couple of games. That is literally a couple of games. Um, then you've got Elliot, who isn't a midfielder. He's probably been our best playing midfielder, but he's not a midfielder. He's a winger playing in midfield. And but you had the conversation with Jan there, and I don't want to spoil it for anything, but basically the gist of it, and he went into much more detail than I ever could, is that the peak of Jurgen Klopp is when we had <clears throat> we had Ginny, Fabinho and, and Henderson. And this was before Henderson's role kind of changed when we got Tiara, because Henderson's role definitely changed. He went kind of more attacking, whereas he used to basically just create space for, um, for Mo and help Trent out. Now he's now he's kind of playing as a 10, right winger, all that shit, um, which I don't think he can really do anymore. That, that's probably more of a job for 13, 14, John Henderson. Um, but I've got on to John Henderson, as, as you sat, st- said in the intro, he's injured, so he's not really part of the discussion at the minute. But the midfield looks lost because nobody fits a profile. We clearly planned to sign one, whether it was Jude Bellingham. I'm not really counting Arthur because he's an afterthought at the minute, let's be honest. Um we probably counted on Naby Keita being there as well. I know he's your, he's all your best mates as well, but we clearly planned on him being there because it would have literally... I already think it's criminal that we didn't buy a proper midfielder, but we clearly planned on him being there. And we know the second half of last season, the midfield worked really well because we had the f- the four first-choice lads always being in the team, or at least, at least three of them. We had Naby, Fab, Hendo and Thiago. And that that's why it worked so well in the second half of the season. Maybe it was momentum or whatever, but except maybe the end of the 2021 season, that's probably the best the midfields looked for me. Like in terms of this new revolution midfield where there's a bit more to do rather than just running about. Um, 
But you just look, whether you love Milner or not, he can't play. He just can't. He can't start, surely. Um, it's 2022. I, it's not. He's not been there for that long. But I think if you break it down what our issues are, if and this is the whole squad, there's a couple. There's a quality issue where I'd say someone like Milner, where the legs are just gone. It, it looks like he's ready for that step down in level. You've got tactical issues where you've got Mo Salah holding hands with the assistant referee for some stupid reason. Um, yeah. Um, and then you've got attitude issues where Trent's being a bellend. And, and the rest of them, but Trent. Fucking hell, mate. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Like, I know some of them, like Van Dyke, you see the odd time walking. Fabinho missed out on a couple tackles. But Trent literally parked up, had the best seat in the house, and went, fucking hell, Liverpool are playing, eh? <laughs> fucking... <laughs> he, he did it for the first United goal as well. Hey, where he, uh, he just stopped running the second the lad got in front of him. You can't do that. You just can't. I don't care who you are. Yeah. You can't do that. And I'm with what you said earlier, Carl. I, I don't care if we only have two centre uh, centre backs fit. Play Gomez at right back. Play Matic. Yeah. Tell well if we are playing in the next two weeks. Hopefully that we. God, how has it got to the stage where I'm praying games get fucking postponed? Jesus. Um, but Park Trent, play Gomez at right back. Um, keep Matip at centre back. Um, okay, team... I'm going. I'm, yeah. I'm going to jump in here. Yeah, I'm I've going got, to jump I've gone in too. I got lost. That, which is great, and and this is I, I I was loving it, and I want I want to let you off and feel free to continue. But this is this is the type of thing where I, <clears throat> it's a perfect example. So you've suggested a potential fix here. And earlier on, when I was talking to my positive work pal who was talking about Liverpool and how things aren't as bad as I was seeing them, he was saying, when I mentioned about Trent, I was like, the lad needs to be pulled and and realise that he's not an automatic starter. Uh, this The lad said to me, well, yeah, we bought Calvin Ramsey for that and he, he can't play because he's been crocked. And I think it's a good point. Mm. Uh, it's a good point. He is and 18 and doesn't exist though. So, Which is why it's a bad point. <laughs> right? Do you see what I mean? So yeah. there's, there's, and, and now your, your fix, your fix, sorry, what did you say, Lisa Marie? I just was like, pros, cons. <laughs> pros and cons, right. Yeah. So, 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 so your fix guy was, Let's swing old uh, Joey Gomez in there to right back mm-hmm. and I keep keep Joel Matip um, where he should have been from the start. It's it was a daft decision. Uh, that for me the biggest silly decision made by the management. They made they've made some really daft decisions between them, and I'm sure the book stops at Kloppo, but I'm, I. I I've, it gives me no joy to dig out Jurgen Klopp. He's one of the best men in the world, uh, and I have nothing but respect for the lad. So I'm just going to talk about the management in general. Mm-hmm. Joe Gomez had one of the most embarrassing uh, outings that a Liverpool players ever had in that first half. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't matter that you can look at all the other things that he did well in that first half. He got roasted and then roasted again and roasted again by the same player again and again and again and again, just done up like a kipper. And of course he deserves to be hooked at halftime for his own mental health, if nothing else. Yeah. And that's what it was because the guy was just... He, 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 and and I, anyone who's played the game at any level, I don't care if it's like down the park, semi-serious, with a few of your pals watching, if your head goes, that's it. Game over. You're fucked. You can't do anything. You, psycho- the game is massively psychological. Massively psychological. So, do we have a fix, Guy? Do we really have a fix? You're, you're suggesting go- Joe Gomez to right back. He's just come off the worst game of his life. To be fair, we've seen Klopp do this in the... But remember Lovren again... I don't want to remind anyone, but I will, seeing as it's a miserable podcast anyway. Remember Lovren against Spurs. Everyone wanted him to basically be sold, me included, probably a couple of you, uh, wanted him sold as... I believe he just got left in the team and probably did all right. But everyone remembers the Spurs game and thinking it was outrageous that he kept his spot. Even Milner last week, the, the sub-appearance against Everton was fucking tragic and then he starts the next game he, Klopp has a history of 
trusting players after maybe as a bounce back or something like that. So in that sense, what? I could see him doing it. But I think the difference between them games, they didn't have attitude issues. They just had a nightmare on the day. Whereas yeah. Trent is clearly an attitude issue. That's a really good. I, 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 think, I think to be fair to him, the, the Lovren thing that the, the Wembley um, um, in 2017, I think it's an. I don't think it was an attitude with Lovren that day. I think it's the opposite. He was hyper, and yeah. therefore he's, he's trying to put people into the stand when his left back standing next to him, thinking that that's me. Why I am I in the me. Spurs half? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, just, just to go back to that, I'm, I'm literally just looking it up now. And um, the next game after that Tottenham game was a 3 0 against Huddersfield, and he didn't play. Right, okay. He, so he played Gomez, Clavin, Moreno, and Matip. Oh, Gomez can fuck off. <laughs> yeah. And Gomez, by the way, was terrible in that Spurs game as well, but no one ever mentions it. Well, yeah. Carl, Carl, you, you, you've, 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 you've come in here. Uh, let's keep the conversation rolling because Guy's talking about the, the idea of. Klopp being loyal to players. And okay, maybe Lovren had a bear he was dropped the next day, but we saw where things hadn't gone well with Palace. And then uh, we saw that Klopp said to the press, and, and the frankness of these fucking interviews is starting to really bug me. He said, like, maybe we just need, we need to improve the effort. And Klopp has started to say things that I can see and you can see. And that's starting to really worry the shit out of me, I'll be honest with you. Because Klopp was at his best when he's talking absolute bobbins to the press, like literally feeding them lines of shit and keeping them like mushrooms in the dark. And yet he's saying in the recent aftermath of the Napoli thing, well, we might need to reinvent ourselves, lads. And now he's saying, before, after, um, after Palace, he was saying like, oh, well, what we need is more effort, and then we go out the next day and we tonk them nine nil. Yeah, effort all over the kit. But then again, it's a team that are absolutely in, in an abject state. Well, there's also another difference there. We would turn up in five minutes, and you play from a different perspective if you're winning, and then we'll have been winning. So this is all coming back to the psychology of it. So this is where I'm going with you for with with, uh, with the topic uh, to you on this occasion. What do you think is going on in terms of – we're getting to it now, man. I'm sorry to lay this one on you, but we're getting to it now. Is there some sort of – is the word malaise? Is there some sort of – malaise is like a stupid, vague term. Is there some? Is there something wrong? And if so, what do you think it is? Like it, uh, you, you, you've, you, you've unfortunately for yourself – Put yourself back in the Twitter uh, sphere. So you've seen people oh, are saying, awesome. people are saying, oh, um, Mo Salah got his contract. He's been shit since. Uh, uh, Jordan Henderson got his contract. He's been shit since. Uh, uh, the 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 lad Darwin Nunes, he got his payday. He doesn't give a crap. And so on and so forth. Everybody's got a stupid theory. I'm wondering if you can. And this is a question I literally put uh, to your uh, peer and contemporary Ian Mulby. What what can you possibly identify for me? What the origin reason for the fall off is? Like I've seen you in the past, recent past, lean into the concept of fatigue, and you're you're not on your own here, brother. Lots of people, lots of people have this as their thing. So where do you, where are you going with this? What do you think? What what what's the uh, what's the the crux of the malaise? And dude, I'm not asking you to be poro here. It's a big question. It's not easily answered. I'm just wondering what your feeling on it is. And 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 do you think it can be turned around in a in any kind of quick period of time? Um, I think they they're knackered. They're absolutely knackered. I mean, look at the style of football we play. We're exhausted. And if I can give, uh, and I'm not giving Trent down the banks tonight as well, obviously, but if there is an excuse, then then Trent's knackered too. Um, I think they're all very tired, and I think that you can the, the the physical manifestation of that is the fact that Robertson hasn't finished a game and uh, started or finished a game. I think last night he played 90 minutes. I can't remember now because they were all they were all going off thanks to this new rule we've got. Um, 
but uh, they're very, very tired. I think we put, I, as I said before, I think we can put it back, but I think I think the, the manager's right to use the word reset. I think he just goes back in and says, right, it's 2016 again, lads. We haven't won the league. And Man City are just getting better. And I think there's an awful lot of mental illness for this. Uh, you know, there's a lot of mental fatigue going on as well. People like Sven Eitzfuck, who didn't win the big two last year, who won the other two instead. Oh, what a shame. Um, but I think, you know, when you're City and you think, knackered, long, long season, still didn't win the Champions League, it's all a bit, I'm all a bit down about it. Here's Erlen Haaland. All right, okay. Darwin Nunes is not here with Erlen Haaland. Um, you know, as good as though he, though he may be, <laughs> got some issues there. But um, <laughs> you you I, don't I, believe in this kid at all, do you? I don't understand why we signed him. And in fact, nothing tells me more that the manager is going to change the formation and the, and the striker can, options because can I add something the, into the Darwin thing? Go on. Because we're we're talking about like an unharmony in in the team. I think it stems more than higher than the team, doesn't it? Because obviously Edwards left this summer. Or, yeah, last winter, whenever the hell he left. Um, when have you ever heard Klopp talking so publicly like he did towards the end of the transfer window about he he didn't question, but he mentioned maybe FSG being very risk averse and stuff like that. When's that yes. ever happened before? So I think Never. this stem this stems above just the team. So it does. We've kind of we and some of the stats lads over on UP they're theorizing that we fucked up preseason. Um, by overworking them, then they're knackered. Maybe it has long term games. I don't know. I'm doing something weird with my mouth. What am I doing? Um, uh, it's just it. The whole club seems to be the opposite of the picture that's been painted the entire clock era. Because we had Edwards was basically a silent bloke in the background who just mm. recommended lads to Klopp, and then we got on with it. Now you've got Klopp and. I'm not. I've really no opinion on Darwin just yet, but he looks like someone maybe Klopp's picked because you look at him, and I have, I have no doubts about him being a good player and stuff like. That. He plays in the same spaces as Diaz, so it's like this is not a logical yeah. signing. Yeah, exactly. In that that's regard, I, mean. I, think, I think he's going to yeah. rewrite the forward line. I think he's going to have to do that, and I think that's he's already hinted by bringing him in in the first place, and that's what he's going to do. He's not Roberto Firmino. Yeah, he and really wasn't. And even he's he's not like a jotter or something who could play no, the central loves, role he... or the left. Whereas Darwin, he basically starts in the middle, then drifts left. It just kind yeah. of seems to take. And Diaz has been our basically our only attacker this season. Yeah, he just takes his space. So it it just seems like unharmonious. Unharmonious is not a bloody word. It's not a word, is it? Well, I, I think I read this last night. I think it's a very very good point. So if you if, if you look what, what what Darwin actually does, he loves the ball in front of him, where Firmino likes it slightly behind him, but he's got fifteen lads around him, maybe he can set free. They're totally different players, and yet he's brought one to replace the other. And I can't see that being to fit into the same shape. I just can't see that. That just doesn't make sense to me. It's like it's like asking Ben Teke to play central midfield. It just you know, it doesn't work. You, you can't do that. And I think mm. what's really struck in answer to the original question, Trevor, I, th- I think what's basically happened is this is a side that's realised it's either thirty or it's like, or it's twenty with nothing in between. And I think that's the problem that we're now finding. They're either getting on a bit, or they're literally just Harvey Ellis, who's like he's been asked to go to you know Naples and Goodison in the same week and solve the problems when he can't because he's still Harvey Elliott's age. Exactly. I, I feel so sorry for that kid. Uh, I've seen him getting dogs abuse. People were, were tweeting me about, you know, different things. And the, by the way, one particular person talked about his lack of, lack of mobility today. And I think, he, I think the tweet was misinterpreted. I think he was talking about like in terms of understanding what he needs to do defensively. And that is not Harvey's game. He is not, he is not wired that way. And they and, better uh, back off my kid. I was going to say, back off. there's a, there's a, there's a, there's potentially furious Tennessee woman who's coming for Mama you. Mama bear. Yeah. <laughs> it's going for you quite soon. You know what? Look, we're not going to be able to solve this, uh, in a podcast. Obviously there's too many variables. It's so interesting to see what's going on. I have a million questions that uh, almost everything you guys are saying, I wanted to just go, but get, but can I, but I, I prefer, far prefer, that you guys do the talking on these shows. And we have come to the top of the hour, and I want to wrap it up at this point because it's the healthy thing to do. 
even though I think we could happily have another enjoyable hour conversation because it, it's gone that way. But we will wrap it up uh, and we will come back uh this time next week or somewhere in the environs of it. And if it's a bit frustrating to you guys that you don't know whether the show is coming on a Thursday or Friday or Sunday, I can only apologize, but we do have kind of difficult schedules to try to uh, align here. And uh, the uh, fucking footballer mountaineer Carl Kopak being primary in the, uh, in the, uh, in the, in the uh, issues here. But realistically speaking, um, it's uh, not something that we've shirked. We we do get you one every week, and was some version of the four of us will be with you uh, before uh, the week is out uh, to talk about how we've gotten on against both Wolves and probably Napoli. So do stick with us for that. Ajax. But before we go, oh sorry, I asked. <laughs> No, no, not no, Napoli. not 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 Napoli again. <laughs> Fuck it up. <laughs> let's let's not do Napoli again because that was. But by the way, how good was that lad up front? The Georgian lad, or assuming? Uh, assuming. Yeah, he's uh, he looks like the one we should have bought. <laughs> <laughs> he just looks all right then. Yeah. What I like about the kid is that he has his socks at a halfway point. If 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 it was the eighties, he would have no shin pads, and I'd love him. You know, he's a cap though gotta be sad i think that's why we didn't buy him yeah we know trev likes jack Grealish now fucking hell yeah <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> no shin How pads done... no shin pads low socks that is jack Grealish to a t no i'm talking about 80s football it used to be the... irish as well no i'm talking about 80s 80s socks where the, the elastic is so shit that by the time uh... you play 15 minutes your socks are around your ankles and you have no shin pads uh, look, you, you, you people, fucking culture. Uh, we need to wrap it up, and uh, we will do that. And I, I, I like genuinely, honestly, like to say thank you to uh, Carl and to Lisa Marie and the guy because I, I'm, I'm happy after that. I didn't think I would be. Uh, and we've been talking about Liverpool being shit, which is an amazing, an amazing turn up for the books. As usual, I want to offer everybody an opportunity to do something to finish the show if they want to, whether it's a plug or whatever it happens to be. So I'll just go around everybody as a matter of course and see how you're fixed. Feel free to just move it on. Or if you've got something you want to say, do that. Lisa Marie, what about yourself? Anything to finish out with? Yes. Um, I wanted to take this opportunity to wish my father a happy birthday as he will be celebrating his 84th birthday before we are on again. Yes. Um, yes. But the reason I wanted to do it on the show, first of all, he is an avid gardener, just like Trev, but he has also served, um, on in various capacities at our local football soccer association for at least 35 years um, as a coach, as a commissioner, as a board member. And I think people who work at the grassroots level of the game don't get enough credit because they're the reason that the Liverpools and the other clubs exist as well, because you have that grassroots game. And um, so, yeah, he has served in varying capacities. He is known as the man who is always out at the fields. He has seen the program grow from six fields to 27 fields, thousands of kids playing. Um, and he's been just one person who's been a part of that. But I think that um, I just thought it was nice to be nice to give him a mention. And so happy birthday to my dad, Bill Milton, on the 14th of September. Cool. Yeah, well, I absolutely love that. Well done, Bill, because Carl and Guy can both immediately think of a guy like Bill, the guy who's at the local club who has been there for years and facilitates everything. And it wouldn't happen without them. And uh, the, the, it's a really good point you make. I'm delighted. Uh, that's, that's, that's lovely. I'm delighted. I'm, I'm delighted you, you did raise that because you're right. The, the, the higher level of the game doesn't happen without the hours put in by people at a completely voluntary nature, usually, uh, at the grassroots level. So, yeah, absolutely. Fair play to Bill. Happy birthday to you, my friend. And well done <laughs> on all the work that you've done in the past. That's and, fantastic. you know, if six 
15 year old me. I mean, you know, he's part of the reason I grew to know the game and love the game. I mean, I, I never played, but both my brothers did and he coached them at varying time. And if you had told 16 year old me that I would be doing a football podcast <laughs> decades into the future, I would have laughed hysterically. So, yeah, yeah. I, I, I guarantee you, Bill doesn't even know what a podcast is, does he? You know, he does have a smartphone. He has an iPhone. I will give him that. I will say for someone of his age, he's he does pretty good with the technology. Yeah, yeah, well, get, get him on the AOP, for Christ's sake, Lisa Marie. What's <laughs> happening here? Uh, great. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Guy, anything to finish out with, my friend? Uh, my local coach was a prick because he made me a substitute goalkeeper for a season. So. <laughs> I played like right. 10 minutes in a season, so that's why I didn't... I barely played football after that. Took a long while. <laughs> so, no, every, everyone's a prick in my experience. Um, just to kind Come of, over here, guy, uh, and I'll introduce uh, you to my dad. <laughs> yeah, so you might give me a game. Um, can't even remember the bloke's name, but you're a prick if you're listening. Um... What was I actually going to say? Uh, it's just odd that we're kind of coming into the game and I'm almost hoping the games are postponed. People are saying two weeks. If it's just Wolves, I just need a bit of respite. If up the players, I need it. <laughs> it just does my head in. It's, I'm sure you feel it a bit as well, Trevor. It's just, you, you watch the game and then if we've played shit, then you've got to think about hosting Raw and stuff like that. It's just, ugh. Just the way we're playing, like I can take losing, but when you just see the lack of effort in some players, that just kind of drains you a bit. But yeah, uh, in terms of stuff to plug, if we do play, um, I've kind of got rate don't hate going quite kind of consistently now. Um, all my guests are clearly jinxes though, so I hate them all. Um, <laughs> so yes, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that should be back. Um, when do we play? Probably Sunday or Monday, if, it, if we actually do have the game. Fantastic. Well, we will keep an eye out for that. And, and you know, what I love about that show, man, I have to say, is the spirit in which you do it, which is the spirit in which you do this show and every other show. And uh, it's underestimated because there's uh, a real, I think, benefit to any podcast that uh, doesn't have someone who's leading it uh, hectoring in a sanctimonious fashion uh, absolutely you can go on your rants but you know uh, it's it's a credit to you to, to to listen to how you conduct yourself over all the various shows you, you've always got like a balance even if you're pissed off and i think I, people appreciate i that. have a host voice trev it's it's very useful at times <laughs> you sure. do you do you do you do you're possessed by the 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 this the, the spirit of host guy who decides not to just uh go in two-footed you and thought it's, milner it's, was a four out of ten you fucking prick <laughs> <laughs> Just ruined it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Lisa Marie, meanwhile, has posted uh, the podcast Spirit Animal, which is one of her cats, which is which cat? That's Max. That's Max right there. He's the, the pretty but not real smart one. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I'd like to say I can relate to him, but I'm the exact opposite. Uh, so uh, uh, to finish out the show, Young Callback, what's the crack? If you can take advantage of a situation in some way, it's your duty as an American to do it. Why should the race always be to the swift or the jumble to the quick-witted? Should they be allowed to win merely because of the gifts God gave them? Well, I say, cheating is the gift man gives himself. Mr. Burns, I insist we cheat. That is glorious. I did. Anything that burns in a good mood just makes me laugh so much. Well, and listen, and if after that you don't understand that Burns is based on Rockefeller, you don't know anything about him. <laughs> That's absolute. Their great granddaddy Rockefeller said that uh, competition was a sin. That's exactly where that quote is coming from. This is tremendous. Well done, young cop. Like, I'm delighted you turned it all around. Yeah, by the way, anything you want to plug before you go, Carl? Not a great deal, to be honest. We're, um, I've had um, COVID, so my Sherlock pod's being put back a week. Um, uh, obviously, I'll give you updates next week about tomorrow's game, which I think is still going ahead. It's the blue team against the black team. And the winner of that, uh, if we win that, we, we're in a, a, a head-to-head with the yellow team for runners-up. We got battered last Friday, absolutely battered. So I'm just giving you my uh, my football. Um, no, no mountains this week. 
It's an update on that because of COVID. Listen. Are there any correlations to how your team plays and how the Reds play? No, because we're second. Okay. No, third. Ask- we're third at the moment, yeah, because we lost last week to the green so team. Does that mean you have Just to curious. become bad for Liverpool to become good? Well, I had oh, actually, interestingly, I had one of the games where last week where I was up to someone far too quick to be playing this level of football we're playing at the moment. And I couldn't get near him, I couldn't get goal side. And we, we, we lost 2-0, two, two I think it was. And um, I got dead unlucky on the second goal. Literally a deflection, but I went straight into this bloke's path and he put it all the way. And, and I still think I played better than Joe Gomez last night. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Seriously, it is. Ugh, fucking hell. <laughs> well, at least yeah. Joe Gomez was standing next to the man he was who had the ball, not just letting him run past him because he simply couldn't be asked. Oh. Not forgiving him. Not forgiving him. Not having it. Not I'm even a sideways that. Trent dig, a two footed Trent dig at the end, which it's is how we. Yeah, don't do, don't do that, lad. Don't do that. And don't do it three times either. <laughs> That's how we roll around here on the AIP. Hopefully you enjoyed it. That was Lisa Marie Hanahan and Guy Drinkle and Carl Kopak. And I'm Trev Downing. And we'll be back with you next week for one more of these. Who knows what we'll be talking about? Hopefully it's good. Hopefully we'll be a little bit happier about how the Reds are doing. Regardless, you know you can count on us being back. So we'll speak to you then. We hope you enjoyed listening to this Anfield Index show. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel so future podcasts find their way to your device automatically. There's nothing quite like fan engagement, and we'd love to know what you think of anything discussed on this show. The best way to get in touch is over on our free Discord community, where both podcasters and listeners debate the hottest LFC topics 24-7. Sign up free now at anfieldindex.com forward slash discord. You won't regret it. You can also follow us on Twitter at Anfield Index and find us on Facebook by searching for Anfield Index. Oh, and before you go, we'd love it if you could leave us a five-star review on your favourite podcast app. It only takes a couple of seconds. And it means the world to the people who create these free shows.